this morning while I was meditating on, on the Spirit of God and, and sh- what I was going to share this morning, the, the Lord spoke to me and, and He said very, just very, very quietly, He said, you know, that this, the Word is the seed and you are God's garden. The Word is the seed and you are God's garden. And God wants to plant things in this garden. Perhaps different giftings, different things. We're not all going to be prophets. We're not all going to be preachers. We're not all going to be this, singers. But God wants to plant different things in this garden so as that we flourish and there's plenty for everybody. Amen? And every need will be met. And I just want to encourage you about that because as I share this morning, I I pray that God would just touch you and help you. Uh, Over the last few months, we've been sharing a a lot on... uh, Different things, we're talking about who we are in Christ and what God did uh, through Christ for us as we were reading the teachings of Paul. Uh, We've talked a lot about David's victory over Goliath and that victory declared uh, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke and it's not uh, just man's ability. This uh, insignificant young boy that overcame uh, uh, Goliath, uh, how Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan We know that for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of Satan. We spoke about the mighty infilling of the Holy Spirit, how we can be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul knew that no devil or demonic force could stand against God's anointed man or woman. See, I I believe that we've got to understand some of these things and realize that that's who we are. And um, we also uh, started to look at... uh, not being ignorant of Satan's cunning devices. I, I believe that God has given us so much and he's, and he's won the, uh, such an amazing battle. He's triumphed over the devil, amen. And, and he wants the church to, to, ri- to rule and to reign, to, to rise above every circumstance. And yet sometimes we're, we're, we're ignorant of Satan's cunning devices uh, and, and he takes advantage of, of people. He, he, he seeks whom he may devour. He goes around like a roaring lion. He seeks opportunity. He waits for, for a time when, when, when you might be down, a time when things aren't going all good for you. And, and he comes in to rob, to kill and destroy. That's what he does. Uh, you know, many people have fallen prey to his schemings today. And, and people are lost. There's a lot of people out there that are, that are, that are just, I don't know where they are. So I believe it's also important not just to know everything that God's done for us, but we also need to know what the enemy's plan is. We need to know some about his strategies. Every uh, good uh, general in the war or football coach or whatever it might be wants to know his enemy's strengths and their weaknesses. They look for their strengths and they look for their weaknesses. And, and I believe that uh, you know, we need to look at some of these things. Because I believe that that's what the enemy does for us. Satan's strength is that it reminds us of our failures. Anybody ever been reminded of your failure? Anybody, you know, when you're in that twilight hour, when you're half awake and half asleep, how many people know that's when the enemy attacks you? When he comes and tells you, you know, all all this rubbish and you you, you get all frustrated. And when you you wake up fully and you realize that he's, he's sowing some seeds in there, but some of those seeds last all day. They, they, they stay in there all day. And, and you, you battle with those things. But, but I believe that, that God wants us to understand that, that the devil is defeated. If we understand, you know, the enemy's weaknesses, his strengths, also his weaknesses, then we know that the, the, that the devil is already defeated. In James 4, 7, it says, it says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Or else draw near to God and he will draw near to you. There's a time, I believe, right now. It's a time when uh, some of the things that we've been already sharing and prophetically and different things like that, the church is on a downward spiral. People are walking away from the fundamental truths of the Word of God. They're walking away from the strengths of, of what we rep what God represents and who we are as a church. They're taking away the, the, the strengths, the prophetic. They're taking away worship. They're taking away praise. They're taking away communion. They're taking away all these things. And, and so they, you come to preach a social gospel. 
And if all we've got is a social gospel, friends, well, we might as well go and join some other club. We're not here. We're here to be the army of God. We're here that God would somehow or other raise up something on the inside of us and somehow or other there's a, there's a righteous indignation that rises up within us that makes us angry at what the enemy has sown into the church. And what Chris was talking about today with the, the, with the leaven and all those sort of things, these things get into the church to destroy the church. And I believe that we've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in the hour that we're living in. It's not a time to lay down. It's not a time to say we're finished because the enemy comes to, to tell you about all your weaknesses and things like that. He'll tell you that, you know, if only you could have done this or if you could have done that, it would have been different. It's all over now. There's different people in the Bible. There's Moses and different ones that, that try to do it in their own strength and found themselves in the backside of a desert. But somehow or other, God raised them up again. And I believe that God is gonna somehow or other breathe again into the church. The spirit of life that's going to cause the church to rise. We're going to shake off some stuff that needs to be shaken off. How many people know there's some stuff that needs to be shaken off? And I also believe that there's a voice that's got to rise in the, in the time. And, it's, and, it's, and if I could say it like this, it's a, like a John the Baptist voice. A voice that will declare even in the wilderness, this is the way. And we're going to prepare a way for the Holy Spirit to come in and, and invade again the church. If that doesn't happen, friend, the foundation that a lot of people's faith is on today is, is on social and not on the things that God really wants to do. Satan's strength is that he knows your weakness and he knows your failures. He's already defeated. And what God, I believe it's a, it's a, it's a bunch of people that are just wanting God, just wanting God and, and allowing God. And as we draw near to him, well then, I believe we're going to see a move of God. The enemy comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. The enemy, the devil, I believe, is drawn to those who are dreamers and have a vision for revival. See, if you're a dreamer, and if you've got a vision for revival, and if you want to see revival, I want to tell you, the enemy will not leave you alone. He'll hassle you. He'll go after you. He'll try to stop you. He'll try to do whatever he can. But I want to tell you that if we hang on, we will overcome. We will triumph over him. If he can't win, if, if he can't win, he will try to stop you. If he can't win, he will try to stop you from becoming what God wants you to become. He will do whatever he can to intimidate us. Intimidation is certainly a major enemy faced by Christians who want to move forward. The enemy will come and tell you certain things about yourself. He'll pull you down. You can't do that. You haven't had enough education. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. But let me remind you about something. If you want to be an overcomer, if you want to be a champion, we've got to brush that thing of intimidation over our lives. Let me remind ourselves that David, Moses, Joshua, and Caleb were never intimidated by a giant or an obstacle that stood in their way. And the church that God is raising up will not be intimidated by any giant or any obstacle that stands in its way. Somehow or other, something will rise up on the inside of us that will say, devil, whatever it is, that obstacle, you are not going to take me out. You are not going to destroy what God's plan is for my life. I'm going to come through. I'm busting through. I'm going to speak to this mountain. I'm going to command this mountain to be removed and it will be removed. Do you believe that today? See, whatever things stood in their way, you see, David knew his God was greater and didn't submit to intimidation of the one much stronger than him. He had something on the inside of him that, that knew his God was greater. You know, the church, sometimes we can sing great songs, our God is greater. We can sing these sort of things and then go home defeated. Go home with, without the, the victory that God wants us to reign in and, and live in. And I believe that somehow or other, something's got to stir within us and we start to stand against those things. I, I don't believe for one minute that when David just saw that Goliath, that he didn't see a giant. He saw the sword. He saw, the, he saw the, the, everything that he had, the, the armor, the, 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 the great shield and everything like that. 
But something, uh, uh, first of all, he would have seen that. But, first, but after a while, something rose up in him and said, my God is greater. And then he started to declare, you might come against me with this and that, but I come against you with something much stronger. I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. There's something much stronger that is in my hand because it's called the anointing. And if we can understand that the anointing will smash and break through, the devil has got no answer for an an anointed man or woman. He has got nothing that he can do. He will not stop us. Though he goes around like a roaring lion, though he will try to stop you from time to time, but we've got to understand also that David knew his God. And we've got to come out, somehow or other come and know that our God rules and reigns today on this planet and that no weapon formed against us will prosper. We're going to rise up and we're going to tell that intimidation where to go. He didn't allow the intimidation because the Goliath was raunting and raving and carrying on. He didn't allow intimidation to get inside of him. The Bible says when you've done all to stand, stand. And I believe that's a great challenge today. The the enemy will also use fear. But you see, God has not given to us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's in 2 Timothy 1.7. You see, courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the master of it. There's a lot of people, when, when you get that, that, oh, just like our sister today, when, when that thought came back to her, and the first thing that would have come to her would have been fear. Fear of, of man or fear of whatever. But we all, how many people, we all love everybody here, eh? It doesn't matter if we make a mistake. It doesn't matter what we do. There's nothing to fear in this house, but fear is in the, is in the back of your mind. Oh, what will people think? What will people say? What will, no, it's not that at all. People can get encouraged by that. People can get excited about that. We've got to be able to share. We've got to have the freedom and the liberty to be able to let, our, let what's on the inside of us come out so that we can minister to other people. Because, you see, there's a lot of people today that that have got amazing gifts on their life. There are singers that will never, ever be heard because the fear of man or the fear of failure has gripped them. And because of that, they're never seen. They they might sing in the shower. They might sing out in the paddock or something like that. But their, their gift lays dormant and it's not used. That's the enemy's trick, the enemy's plan. But God's not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us power, love, and a sound mind. He's given us the ability to overcome him. See, courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the master of it. I want to master fear. I want to master those things. A lot of people, a lot of prophetic words, a lot of, lot of giftings that are never, ever seen or heard. The fear of failure is another thing that the enemy would try to destroy us with. If God be for us, who can be against us? <laughs> To conquer the ragings of intimidation and fear and double-minded, you must see things as God sees them. Can you, somehow or other, we, we see things as, as, our, as our inability or our lack or whatever it might be wants us to see them. But I've got to see things as God sees them. I've got, I got to be able to see what God sees. If you have a quick look with me in the book of Judges chapter 6, there's a very, very interesting story here. And the angel of the Lord came to a man. The man's name was Gideon. He was thrashing wheat, in verse 11 this is, in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. Here's a man that's hiding from an enemy. He's trying to uh, thrash out a bit of wheat so he can feed his family. He's hiding from the Midianites or hiding from his enemy. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Friend, you may be in a meeting today. You could be anywhere. You might be at home mowing the lawn. You might be doing washing the dishes. You might be washing the car. And the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you. The Spirit of the Lord comes to you and starts to speak to you. Starts to say things, that, what, what he wants you to do. Might be, might be something very, very simple. But friend, I want to tell you, the first thing that will attack you is what you think about yourself. 
And if you don't see things the way God sees them, if you only see the way your intellect sees them, if you only see the way your past failure sees them, if you only see those sort of things, you back away and never ever get the job done. You've got to see things the way God sees them. And here is Gideon hiding, thrashing wheat. And the angel of the Lord appeared, appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. I, I, you know, okay, this is Gideon. No, you've got to hear God say this to you. The Lord is with you, you mighty man or you mighty woman of valor. The Lord is with you. God is no respecter of persons. God is just as much with you as he is with Brian Houston or, or Benny Hinn or, or John Meller or any other person that's used mightily by God. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of Allah. What is the difference between some of these people that have achieved great things is that they see things the way God sees them and not the way their past failures see them and they break the spirit of intimidation or whatever it might be that gets around their life and they start to break through. They start to break through. I was listening to Brian Houston's testimony the other night on the television. And, and you know, you listen to that man when he started off, he was just, a, he, he was just as scared as anybody else. He had just as many, but the thing is that somewhere along the line, you've got to see beyond what your natural man wants you to see, and you've got to see what God wants you to see. And you see Gideon, when he, when he first spoke, when God spoke to him, and he started to sp say what I thought was so ridiculous. Uh, let me just read it again. God, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? See, he's, he's going through the natural man first. What is thinking? The enemy is sowing all these thoughts into his mind. Gideon, this is not real. This is not going to happen to you. This will never happen. And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. This is how his thinking is. His thinking is that there's no way that we can ever get out of this mess. God has forsaken us. There's no miracles. There's no this. There's none. All the stuff that our fathers told us about was just idle tales. There's no reality in it. Friend, we've got to be, be somehow or other believe that this word of God is the word of God, amen. And that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it, will he not make it good? What God has spoken about you, what God speaks about you in the word, what God says he can do, he will do for you. But if we don't see it as God sees it and we just let our, our natural man or our, whatever it might be inside of us speak to us, we will say, it'll never happen for me. It'll never happen because, 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 because. What I like about God is that God ignores a man's natural thing totally 100%. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours. And you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? He, God's not talking to, or the angel's not saying to him, go in this might of yours, because in the might of his was totally negative. But what he was saying is, go in what I'm speaking over your life, not what's coming out of your mouth. Go with what I'm saying. Go in this might. Go in this power. Friend, can I say this to you? You would be amazed at the power that is invested in your life and the anointing that's over your life and what you can do to every enemy that could come against you. If only we realize and saw how God says, uh, sees it and what God says is true, that we would rise up and say, devil, you are a filthy liar. I'm not gonna cop this and break the stronghold over your life and my life. What stops us? The lies of the enemy. Gideon, you're a mighty man of Allah. Go in this might of yours. Go in this strength. Go in this power. Go in, in this. Go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel. 
And then he said to him, Oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. So here he is, he's talking about his own pedigree. If David would have looked at that Goliath and said, I am nothing but a shepherd's boy. I am nothing but the the youngest member of my family. I am a boy. I am not good enough. He had to look beyond what he could see in the natural. And he had to look to his God. And he had to say, God, your anointing will smash this yoke. The anointing will smash this fetter. The anointing will pull this thing down. Because this thing has come to defy the word of God. It's it's got to come down. Friend, it's got to come down. The lies of the devil has got to come down. What what the enemy's doing in the church today must be broken, must be smashed. There's got to come a voice that will rise up and say what God says about the church and not what, 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 I was going to say common sense, nonsense (laughs) says about the church. And how are you going to build? Friend, I want to tell you, coffee machines and cake will not build the church. We need the presence of God, amen. There's got to come a voice. And many voices are laying dormant. We listen to people say things that somewhere along the line, we'll say, what a lot of garbage. Go home and wash your mouth out with soap. (laughs) Because what are they doing? They're pulling down the Word of God. They're bringing the Word of God to no effect. With their, mouths, with their mouths they praise Him, but their hearts are far from Him. The church is drifting away from its purpose and plan. We've got to come back to the, to the purpose. We've got to come back to it. And, and the purpose of the, this man, he, was just a, he, he, he looked like a failure. He was the least of his father's household. He, he, was, he was just nobody. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you. And you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Friend, I've got to hear today the word of God or, or what we're doing in this place is useless. I've got to hear God say he's with us. I will be with you. I am with you and you will defeat the enemy. How many people believe that the enemy will be defeated? I believe he's already defeated, but I believe that he has conned the church. He has poured rubbish over the church. He has lied to the church and the church has swallowed it hook, line and sinker. We've got some form of godliness, but I don't know where it is. Friend, God before us, who can be against us? We've got to believe. We've got to see uh, God's word God's, uh, as God sees his word. He sees what God knows what he can do. God's word is creative. He made the worlds out of nothing. Somewhere or other, we've got to to get another vision of our God. Our God is not up in heaven right now with his hand in in his, with his face in his hand saying, oh no, what can we do? He is not having a bad hair day. He's not having a hizzy fit up there. He is, he he just knows. And I want to tell you that wherever the the word today, there's a word of God is being preached all over the world. There's a bunch of people that God is stirring up and raising us up. And and there's something putting it on the inside and God's looking down there and he says, I'm going to breathe on them. I'm going to breathe my spirit in them. I'm going to breathe my life into them. I'm going to cause them to rise up as an exceeding mighty army. And they're going to go forth and they're going to conquer and they will destroy all that the enemy has. I honestly believe that. I believe that because that's what God does. God's a creative God. He, he, he made the worlds out of nothing. He just spoke and said, let there be. God, to, God today could just, Lord, and it would happen, amen. But I believe that there's a time and there's a season. 
There's a time and there's a season. Just like the day of Pentecost, there was a time and a season. Five minutes before the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in an upper room wondering what was going on. Friend, I want to tell you, it could happen today, it could happen next week, it could happen tomorrow. But one day I know this for sure. One day I know that the wind of God is going to blow into this building and it's going to cause a fire to come on. It's going to touch people's lives and there's going to come a great awakening in Jesus' name. Not just in this building, but in many people buildings where God is, where there's a hunger for the things of God, where people are hungry. You see, you've got to understand that our God is not some little pipsqueak. He is creative God. He is God. Let your mind see God, amen. He's not a defeated person. The enemy's defeated. The church may not be a good representative of God right now because of the lack and the failure and the cunning devices that Satan has poured into the church, stolen from us, creative God. He's a powerful Jesus, amen. Powerful, my Saviour that I serve is not, not in a grave. He's not still hanging on a cross. He's risen from the dead, amen. He has risen triumphant over all of his foes. He just walked, when he walked on this planet, there was a person there that was, had, was a paralytic and, and, and had no hope and, and so forth. He just looked at him. He never got into a frenzy or anything like that. He just said, pick up your bed and walk. Because he knew that his words were powerful. Friend, do you realize this morning the power that's in your words? The power that's in your words, if you can speak that life and get connected to God and get connected to what God says about us, God is going to have a church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. Not because Neil said it or somebody else said it, but because God said it. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I say many times, Jesus wants his church back. Jesus wants his church back. Amen? Wants his church. Powerful church. Prophetic. He said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I believe today that God is an amazing God, an awesome God, a triumphant God, a victorious God. And I believe that he wants to do amazing things. I also believe that Caleb uh, dreamed of a promised land. You know, friend, the enemy's plan for our lives is to stop us from going into what God has for us. God has got so much that he wants to give us. He has got so much joy and victory and power and love and excitement, enthusiasm. Everything that the world is searching for is in God. Caleb, a man that came out of Egypt with a promise. God said, set my people free and let them go. The promise was, I have a place for you, a land flowing with milk and honey. And really this is a, a, a typical pattern of the church. God says, I want to set you free. I want you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want you to know the power of my resurrection. I want you to know all these things that have made available to you. And we go so far. And they went in with the, ten, the 12 spies and they came back and 10 of the spies says, no, we cannot go in. We cannot possess the land. Friend, I want to tell you, can I say this? Somewhere we've got to rise up a people that say, a Joshua generation that says we will go in. And Caleb had a promise. He saw a land. He saw a place flowing with milk and honey. And I, I don't know about you, but I've been around long enough now that I've been around and I've seen revivals. I've been in the midst of, of, of revivals overseas in, in South America. 
I've seen thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people lining up from daylight till dark, queue after queue, hundreds after hundreds getting born again, having the privilege of being able to just be in those meetings and see people getting born again. This, this one gentleman asked me if I'd speak to his business people. He said, you have them for an hour and a half. I started to speak to them and the miracle power of Jesus started to come down amongst these people. And, the, and people will get, one girl had a, a toe that was wrapped around her other toe and the thing just came totally straight. I knew that this man said, you've got an hour and a half. I'm a person there that wants to do what's right. So after an hour and a half, I said, the meeting is closed. And I said, that's it. And they were yell, still yelling and wanting prayer. I walked out of the room. I, walked, I said, I've got to get out of here. I don't want to lose favor with this man. I want to respect and do what he wants me to do. I walked out and Nancy was there with me. We we're out in the street and people were just coming up and wanting prayer. They were getting slain in the spirit all over the place. We had the footpath and the gutter everywhere. People were just laying in the street place getting healed delivered set free I was running away trying to be keep to my commitment power of God. I've been I've seen the anointing I've seen thousands getting born again I know what it's like I've got a dream I've got a vision God says come to back to the sunshine coast come back here there's unfinished business I got a dream I got a dream I got a Caleb spirit on the inside of me I know that God's gonna do something I know I know I know I'm not looking at what I see I'm looking at what I know I'm looking at what God says to me God says this is what we're gonna do and this is hell will have to freeze over for it not to happen Caleb, he, 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 he saw when the people said, we can't go in, we can't go in. And they turned around and they walked away in a wilderness. He listened to the negativity for 40 years. But praise God, I say praise God, there came a time when his foot touched that Jordan again. Amen. I believe we're going to touch the Jordan again. I believe it's going to open to us in Jesus' name. I believe the realm of the Spirit will open to us. Amen. We're going to see signs and wonders and miracles like never before. He said the latter rain is going to be greater than the former rain. It talks about that the, 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 the harvest is going to overtake the sower. I like that. Amen. Before you can even tell them about Jesus, they're going to get saved. Thus ends the sermon. <laughs> How many people want to be part of that generation? How many people want to do that? Amen. Instead of playing tiddlywinks. But the cappuccino is lovely. Though. Praise God. I like cappuccino. Actually, I like flat white. <laughs> Moses, Caleb had, there's a different spirit. There's something about this man that was amazing. One day, you know, he knew that one day the promise that God had given to him, that promise stirred on the inside of him. He knew that the promise that God had given him, God was able to bring it to pass. Even though he'd walked away from it, even though he saw the way that the people said that, you know, God had left them and goodness knows what else. He didn't allow the disappointment of hearing the 10 spies bring a negative report and turn away. He didn't allow the lies of the devil to stop the dream. Don't ever allow anything to stop the dream. How many of you folks here are believing for a revival? Come on, let me, let me, let me. You know, that's not bad for a church. Put your hands up again, have a look around. Come on, how many people are believing God for a revival? See, that we're, we, we're going to have one, amen. <laughs> we're going to have one. We're going to have one, amen. Come on, turn to someone and say, we're going to have one. <laughs> we're going to have one. We're going to have a revival because that's what we're going to have. That's what God says, amen. Unfinished business, get, get sorted out. Forty long years. So far from his dream. Wandering around the wilderness, kicking jam tins. But something still burnt deep on the inside of him. Friend, I pray today that God would plant something deep on the inside of him. No, not sorry. No, that he would breathe on that which is already planted 30, 40, whatever years, 20 years. I don't know how, but whatever he's done. Amen. 
How many people want that stirred up? Come on. See, he, something still burnt inside of him. They were gathering manna. They were doing this or doing that. But all he could dream about was what he saw in the realm of, as he walked into that promised land, as he saw the pomegranates and the grapes and the, and the different things that were there. As he saw a land flowing with milk and honey, he wasn't looking at the giants. He wasn't looking at whatever was in there. He's just looking at what God said he could have. That thing burnt on the inside of him. It sustained him. It kept him alive. I want to tell you, friends, your dreams will keep you alive. Your dreams will wake you up in the middle of the night. Your dreams will get on the inside of you that will cause you to say, yes! That will cause you to come to church and throw your hands in the air and worship the King of Kings and cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. You dream, you dream, you dream, you dream. Your dreams will keep you alive. All oh, the joy of that day when his foot touched again. The Jordan and the waters began to part. Caleb's burning vision kept him young and vibrant. He cried out, give me this mountain. I want to grit my teeth. Give me this mountain. Yeah. Come on, how many will say that with us? Give us this mountain. Come on, give us this mountain. It's ours, amen. I'm well able to do it. I, we can do it. Give me this mountain. You know, can you imagine this man, 80 odd years of age, as he walked in there. And by the way, Joe's 80 no, 38. <laughs> He's 38 on Monday. 38 on Monday. Good on you, Joe. Come out here, Joe. Quick, come out here. Caleb was a young... This man preaches with fire. He's got more fire in his belly. That's why he wears a red shirt. Can you... Caleb was this man's age and he walked in. <laughs> he said, I'm going to have this mountain. He didn't see, it wasn't some walk in the park. It wasn't tiptoeing through the tulips with Tiny Tim. He knew from before that there were giants in the land. He knew that there were walled cities. But he somehow or other on the inside, friend, this is, what's, this is what will make conquerors. Something on the inside of him said, whatever's in there, my God is bigger. Whatever's in there, my God will give it to me in Jesus' name. And my brother, you are my pastor. <laughs> he gave me a book today. Every pastor needs a pastor. <laughs> That's right. That's good. Happy birthday, mate. Thank you very much. He knew he had to fight for it. Come on, you've got to fight for what you want. He knew, you know, it was his. He just knew it was his. How bad do you want the promise God has given you or me? How bad do you want it? Friend, go for it. Don't let the do devil con us again. He's a liar and a thief and a cheat, amen? Our God is greater. Jody, bring your music team up. We're just gonna sing it. There's a song we're gonna sing. It's an amazing song. I want you to get so excited about it. You might even wanna come out the front and stand out here and sing it. Can I just, while the band's getting ready, how many people are ready for a revival? I say every morning, coming ready or not. <laughs> Let's stand to our feet. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your goodness and your power. 
Thank you, my God, that you have given us the land. You have given us the land. We're not here to play games. We're here to take over. We're here to say Jesus Christ is Lord. We're here to say that you are the King of Kings and you rule and reign today. Amen and amen.